Hello and welcome to the next lesson of the matrix, uh, algebra of matrix and in today's lesson we will talk about elementary transformation on matrix. So these are some important transformations that we can perform on any matrix and after performing these transformation the obtained matrix is called as an equivalent matrix. Let's see what are these three elementary transformations that we can perform on a matrix either on a row or on a column. So let's see the first uh, elementary transformation interchanging any two rows or columns. That means we can interchange two rows and then the obtained matrix will be same that will be called as equivalent matrix or we can do the same thing with the columns. Remember, we cannot interchange with row and column together. That means if you want to interchange, we need two rows to interchange with each other or we need two columns to interchange with each other. So this is symbolically represented as R of I and R of J if we are doing it with rows and if you are doing it with columns, then it is C of I and C of J. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Let's uh, take a square matrix. Let's say if I have a square matrix with values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and let's say 7, 8, 9. And we know that this is a square matrix. How many rows we have? Three rows we have. Uh, this is called row number 1. This will be row number 2. And this will be row number 3. And we have three columns. This is column number 1, column number 2, and this is column number Three. So the order of this matrix is uh, 3 cross 3. So let's apply the first uh, transformation, elementary transformation on this. This is interchanging any two rows. Let's say if we want to interchange two rows, row 1 and row 2. So how I should write it? I should write it row 1 interchange with row 2. And the new matrix will be 4, 5, 6. The second row will come on the place of first. And the first one will come on the second. So we have interchanged these two rows. So this is, we have obtained a new matrix. Let's say if I call this new matrix as B and the original matrix as A, then the matrix A and B are both equivalent to each other, right? So uh, this is the first elementary operation. That means we can say that A is equal to B because once we'll uh, find out the determinant of these two that will come same. So this is A is equal to B. That means if we perform any elementary operation onto the matrix, its value is not going to be changed. It will always be equivalent. So this is the first elementary transformation that we can interchange any two rows, right? Let me do it once again, show you one more example. Uh, let's say if I want to interchange row number one and three, excuse me so row number one and three three will come at one's place so this is seven eight and nine and one will come on third place one two and three and the second one will remain unchanged so this is interchange of row one and three the similar operation can be performed on the columns as well so let me show you how we can do this let's say if we want to interchange column number two with column number three then the new matrix will be this is column number two and this is column number three so this three will come here column number two will come here at thirds place and the column number one will remain same so this is the new matrix obtained after performing the row elementary operation that is interchanging two columns c2 and c3 with each other so these are the first elementary operations that can be performed either on rows or on columns okay so let's talk about the next uh, elementary transformation the next elementary transformation is multiplication of the elements of a row or a column alternatively of a row or column by a non-zero scalar quantity k that's a non-zero scalar quantity it could be 4 minus 4 10 minus 100 it has to be a non-zero so the first thing is it should be a non-zero and the second thing is it should be a scalar quantity it cannot be a vector quantity so it has to be a scalar quantity so multiplication of the elements of a row 
by a non-zero scalar quantity k and it is represented by r of i to k of rj. Let me show you an example. Let's say if you want to multiply this row r2 with a number 2, then how we'll be doing is uh, this r2 will be changed by 2r2. That means we'll multiply by 2 in all the elements of r2 and then we'll rewrite this. So this will be r1 will remain same. This is 1, 2, 3. R3 will remain same. This is 7, 8, 9. And what are the changes in R2? Each element is multiplied by 2. So 4 to the 8, 5 to the 10, and 6 to the 12. So this is the new matrix obtained after the row elementary operation. And this matrix is equivalent to this matrix. Let me show you one more example. And uh, let me show you this example on columns. Let's say if I want to do uh, let's say C3 with 1 upon 3 C3. Yes, this is also a non-zero scalar quantity. So what will be the result? The result will be the first column will remain same. 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8 and the third column is being multiplied with 1 upon 3. So this will be 3 upon 3 or we can also write as a 1 and then next is 6 upon 3. This is 9 upon 3. We can also rewrite this as 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8, 1, 2, and 3. So this is the next obtained matrix and this is also equivalent to the first matrix. Now let's talk about the third elementary transformation. The third elementary transformation. So it says addition of constant multiple, addition of constant multiple, of the elements of any row to the corresponding elements of any other row. So uh, this seems to be a little bit complicated but it's not that complicated. That means if we want to multiply the elements of a row with a constant and then this result is added to some other row. Let's see here. This is Ri is changed to Ri plus Krj. That means in some row Rj, we are multiplying with constant and then we are adding this row into some other row and this is the resultant replacement. Let's see with an example. Let's see who want to perform an operation. We want to change R1 by R1 plus 2R2. So this is a valid elementary transformation. So what we need to do is first we need to multiply each element with 2 of R2 and then we need to add that element in the corresponding element of R1. What are the corresponding elements? Let's say if this R2, uh, this is the first element of R2. So its corresponding will be the first element of R1. This is the second element of R2. So the corresponding element will be the second element of R2. This is the third element of R2. The corresponding element will be the third element of R1. So let me perform the operation. So what I am doing is I am performing uh, R1 to R1 plus 2R2. So let's do it. So this is 1 plus 2R2. So this is 2 into 4. So this is the first element. The second element, this will be 2 plus 2 into 5. This is the second element. The third element, 3 plus 6 into 2. Or I should write it like this. 2 into 6. So this is the change into the first row. The remaining rows will remain same 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So let me solve it and write it again. So this is 4 to the 8 and 1, 9. This is 5 to the 10 and 2, 12. This is 6 to the 12 and 3, 15. So this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So this is the resultant uh, matrix. This is the obtained matrix and this is equivalent to this given matrix. So these are the three valid elementary transformations. Let me show you one more example of this uh, last transformation with respect to columns. So if I want to do this uh, elementary transformation with respect to column and if I want C3 to be converted by C3 plus uh, 3C1. Let's say if I do this. So uh, what will be the resultant matrix? So obviously we are changing C3. So C3 column will be reflected. Uh, C1 and C2 will be same. So this is 1, 4, 7. C2 is 2, 5, 8. 
and now this C3 will change. So this is C3 uh, will be 3 plus 3 cross its corresponding is 1. So this is 1. Next is 3. Uh, next element of C3 is 6 plus 3 cross. So its corresponding is 4 in the column. And the next is 9 plus 3 cross. So its corresponding is 7. And now on solving, we'll have 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8. And then we'll have 3 into 1, 3 plus 3, that is 6. 4, 3 is a 12 plus 6, this is 18. 7, 3 is a 21, 21 and 9, this is 30. So this is the obtained matrix and this is equivalent to the original matrix. So these are all the three row elementary operations. Now let me show you one more example where I will perform uh, continuously these three operations on this particular matrix. So let me show you. I'm going to do these uh, three operations. Let me write these three operations. Uh, what I want, let me rewrite this C1, C2 and C3. Now let me write the three operation that I want to perform on this uh, matrix. The first one is R1 interchange to R2. This is the operation number one. I would like to do it operation number one. Then I would like to do R1 to 2R1. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the operation number two. And then I would like to perform, let's say, R3 to R3 plus 2R1. So these are the three operations I would like to perform. I'll always suggest you to perform the operations sequentially. Once you perform the uh, elementary transformation number one, get the result and on the obtained result, you perform the next operation. So this is the updated matrix. You will perform the next operation. <clears throat> so this is uh, advisable. Let me show you why this is advisable. Let me perform the first operation on this matrix. So now this matrix will become, I'll interchange R1 with R2. So this will become 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3 and 7, 8, 9. So this is the resultant and updated matrix. Now the second operation will be performed on this updated matrix. See, that is why I said that you should perform sequentially. Now if you will see this is R1. So the values of the R1 have been changed. If you would have performed this operation on this uh, matrix then the result would have been wrong so we need to uh, do it sequentially and always perform operations on the updated matrix so now let's perform the operation so this is r1 to 2 r1 that means we need to multiply these uh, elements with 2 so 4 2s are 8 5 2s are 10 6 2s are 12 so the remaining rows will remain same like this so now this is the resultant matrix after the operation number 2 now let me perform this operation number three obviously i'll perform this uh, on the updated matrix so now let me do it this is r3 will be changed by r3 plus 2 r1 that means r1 will remain same so this is 8 10 12 r2 will remain same now the row that is will change is r3 so this is 7 plus this is 2 r1 that is 2 cross 8 next is 8 plus 2 cross 10 this is 10 next is 9 plus 2 cross 12 as this is 12 so now let me uh, calculate this and rewrite 8 to the 16 16 plus 7 this is 25 uh, 16 plus 7 this is 23 sorry this is 23 8 10 to the this is 28 this is 28 12 to the 24 and this is 33 so we have this uh, new matrix and this is equivalent to the original matrix A. So this is how we perform row elementary operations. These are very important uh, in terms of finding out the inverse and solving the system of linear equations. So in the next lesson we will be talking about how we can find out the inverse of a matrix using row elementary operations. Thank you so much.